Hey everyone, welcome to Judging for the Win. I'm Dave, and this is my daily ruling. Today, I'm going to be talking about the new Ring Tempts You mechanic from the Lord of the Rings set. Ready? Let's get started. The first thing that I need to talk about is the ring itself. Whenever the ring tempts you, you'll get an emblem named the ring. Like all emblems, this one exists in the command zone, not the battlefield, which means it's not possible to interact with it in any normal way. For example, you can't copy it with something like Clever Impersonator, and you can't destroy it with something like a Disenchant, or a Desert Twister, or... Nope, not even that. Now, I suppose this mostly makes sense from a flavor perspective, but the next part kinda doesn't. It's possible for each player to have the ring. That is, if the ring tempts Amy, then she'll create a The Ring emblem. Then if the ring tempts Nick next turn, then he will get his own The Ring, and Amy will get to keep hers. You'd think that if there was just one ring, then it would pass from player to player like the Monarch or the Initiative do, but that's not how it works. Each player has their own ring, and their progress is tracked separately. More like how dungeons work. When I talk about progress, what do I mean? Well, when the ring first gets created, then it just has this one ability that you see there. But every time the ring tempts you while you already have the ring, then your ring will gain the next ability in the sequence. This process is strictly additive, meaning that once the ring gains an ability, there's no normal way for it to lose it. It won't get reset once you end it, like a dungeon, and there isn't any way to flicker it like you could a figure of destiny. There's no way that I could think of in order to make it lose abilities either. In addition to powering up your The Ring emblem, being tempted by the ring does one other thing, alluded to by those abilities you can see. You choose a creature that you control, and that creature becomes your Ring Bearer. Ring Bearer is just a designation that the creature can have. Being the Ring Bearer doesn't do anything special by itself, but other abilities can look for a player's Ring Bearer and do something to it. So, for example, a card like this would give all the rates you control protection from Ring Bearers. A creature is your Ring Bearer as long as you control it or until you choose a different creature. If your Ring Bearer dies or otherwise leaves the battlefield or if you lose control of it, then that means that you will not have a Ring Bearer anymore. You'll need to find another way for the Ring to tempt you so that you can choose another creature. If the ring tempts you while you already control a ring bearer, then you can choose a different creature or the same creature again to be your ring bearer. In either case, that will count as choosing that creature as your ring bearer for abilities that trigger when you choose a specific creature as your ring bearer. What you cannot do is fail to choose a creature. If the ring tempts you, you have to choose a creature to be your ring bearer, even if you don't want to. Maybe you don't control any creatures, in which case it will not be possible for you to designate a creature as your ring bearer. In that case, you still do get the next ability unlocked on your The Ring emblem, and the game still counts that as being tempted by the ring, so any abilities that with that trigger condition will still trigger. Although, I think that the only cards that have that kind of triggered ability are on creatures, so you'd have to jump through a few hoops in order to end up in that scenario. On the other hand, triggered abilities that trigger when you choose a creature as your ring bearer will not trigger, because, well, it was not possible for you to choose a creature as your ring bearer. Alright, now let's talk about a couple of other questions that you might have about the ring's abilities. I guess the biggest one I could see would be about how making it legendary works. So the interesting thing about the legend rule is that it only applies if you have multiple creatures that all have the same name and are all legendary. So if you had two grizzly bears and you make one of them your ring bearer, then the legend rule will not kick in because you only have one legendary creature. That does mean that if you had an on Sarah's wings on one of those grizzly bears, you would probably want to make that one be your ring bearer. Regarding the can't be blocked by creatures with greater power part, that can interact a little bit unintuitively with other abilities that make blocking requirements. So for example, if Frodo is your ring bearer, then your opponent would have to block it, but they would not be able to do so with any creature with two or greater power. And I think that about does it. Hopefully with this, you'll be able to confidently answer questions involving this new mechanic in games that you're a part of. But that's all I have for you today. How did you do? Join me again next time for another daily ruling. But until then, I hope you have a great day.